This episode of Philly Fame TV is sponsored by Top Dog Law. Now y'all already know who to call for any accidents or injury cases. If you want that top dollar, you better get that top dog. You can hit him up on Instagram at Top Dog Law or visit his website www.topdoglaw.com. All right, y'all, welcome back to Philly Fame TV once again. Appreciate all the love, support, and feedback on the channel. That's your first video that you came to. You know, make sure y'all like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. We're just going to jump right into it. You know, we're going to do a little reaction to the Quilly and DJ Academics interview. Um, you know, like we did to the Dean joint, the Dean interview. Um, this was an hour shorter than the Dean interview. You know, Quilly, Quilly pretty much gave it up how, how I expected him to give it up. I mean, like, a lot of people was anticipating this interview because they know Quilly. When I think about him, he always been entertaining since the DVD days. Like, you know, him and Meek Beef go far back. So, he been doing DVDs and interviews and stuff for years ago like I got content with him and Joey Jahad when they was beefing with me you know what I mean years ago at the end of the day stop saying shit that's fraudulent say some shit that's real like y'all say something like this a nigga a rat a nigga snitching you gotta have so everybody already knew it was gonna be entertaining like that's one thing about Quill you know how to I mean, him and Hadi, like, they always knew how to be entertaining when that camera come on. So, Quilly been waiting for a moment like this for a long time. Like I said, Ben's though him and Meek been beefing for so long. Even though they squashed it at one point in time, that's when he was talking about, he mentioned in the, um, in the interview how Meek had invited him to a video shoot or, he invited him to a video shoot, but I don't think Quilly mentioned, I think he said he invited him to a party or invited him somewhere out to a club. He said he just was popping by. It was like basically Quilly felt like he was trying to shit on him and all that. Well, at this time, they was cool. They actually squashed it. I forget how they squashed it or what happened, but they was actually cool for a little bit of time. And like I just mentioned, they um, Meek had a video shoot for the song Check. Um, and Quilly was there. And that's the drum, the, the, the situation where somebody got hit with a gun and people were saying it was Louis V. Gutter, but that turned out that wasn't the case for that video shoot. I don't think that video ever dropped either. Like, that's crazy. But a lot of people from the city was there. And that's when Meek and Quilly was, you know, cool. And then some stuff happened after that. And they became not cool again. And one of the things that was mentioned, that Quilly mentioned, was the real one song. When Quilly had the real one song, this when he's down on all deck, he had the song spinning on the radio, just like his first single. Quilly always had mixtapes and all mixtapes popping. They always had little songs on his mixtape, but just like his first single where it's popping on the radio and he getting shows and all this stuff from it, just like his first joint. So after that built the buzz, he said Meek had reached out to him. This Meek was in jail at the time. And he said he reached out to him and said, yeah, they playing that song in the jail. Like, I'm fucking with that. I'm going to jump on it. And he said, when well, me come home, he, charged, he, wanted, he wanted to charge him 75000 for it. So that's where the discrepancy came again. You know what I mean? According to Quill. Like, that's where it started back up. And then I think it died down for a little minute. I don't know if they got cool, but it died down for a little minute. And then it started back up again. When, um... When uh, Meek had the song, the Uptown song, I think when him and Fed, and that's at the time when Quilly was on, you know, on the drugs heavy and he was on camera and people was catching him on camera, you know, going through what he was going through. And um, Meek had put on Twitter, I believe, like, yo, uh, I want to put Quilly in, this uptown, in the Uptown video or whatever the case may be. Like, I don't know if he put LOL, Life on Emoji or whatever. And Quilly felt some type of way, like, he was like, damn, like, I ain't no video vixen or some shit like that, know what I mean, like, and then Quill had other little videos of him going through it, and he felt like Meek was bitten off of him while he was going through his stuff on camera, and people was catching him on camera, so then that sparked it right back up, and had been up ever since, and then once Quill got back on his rap shit, he dropped that diss song, and I mean, where he shot the video and all that, 
So yeah, and that's where it's been at. So this interview, he been waiting for this probably <laughs> like for the longest time. So you know, act through a lot of beat out there like I knew he would. Like he been thrown out there for pound side pop and and um, Dean. I mean, and you know, Quilly was gonna take it to the moon. Like far as like when I mean beat, I mean like certain questions. He throwing questions out there to get them to go in on me. Like. And I explained in the last joint with Dean, Joe Dean didn't really take the beat off. Like, they ain't really go where he, where Eck was trying to get him to go. But I already knew, you know what I mean? Quilly was going to go go all the way there. So, a lot of people going to find this entertainer, you know, looking at the comments. I seen a lot of people found, found the entertainer so far, like, that watched it, for those who already seen it. So, yeah, he was, you know, one of the questions he was asking... Quilly, they got Quilly to, you know, going on Meek on, he's asking me, Quilly, like, do Meek be sliding, and, uh, asked him, like, he talked about Quilly getting shot a little minute ago, and, um, he asked Quilly, like, damn, I ain't know if Meek had something to do with it, I mean, like, I ain't know if Meek had something to do with that, like, little stuff like that, like, he was throwing out there to get Quilly to go in on Meek, and, um, and Quilly actually challenged Challenged him on the black ball joint too, like and Dean challenged him as well. When Quilly said to him, like, nigga, this your shit, how you gonna let somebody else tell you who to put on your platform? Like, when what did you know Act be talking about he ain't wanna feature nobody from Philly on there cause he ain't wanna, you know, ruin his relationship with Meek and all that. So Dean pretty much challenged him on that and Quilly did as well. Like, I mean, and you know I spoke on that in the Dean John, like I don't think I think Eck using that as a cop out for as like featuring Philly because there's plenty of people from Philly he could feature that belong on there that deserve to be on there that don't have no beef with Meek and he never featured them. Like like I said, Core and Tor and you know, a bunch of people like that. O T seven Quine called him out too, that's why he ain't had him on there as of yet. Because O T seven Quine, he mentioned that in all the interviews too, how he wanted to get, he said he wanted to get Kwani on there, but he ain't want to offend Meek and all that. He ain't know if him and Meek had issues. So he, I mean, he using that as an excuse and Kwani wasn't feeling that. Kwani like, nah, <laughs> like Kwani ain't, I mean, Kwani ain't going for that excuse. So that's why Kwani ain't on there as of yet. Maybe he'll get on there in the future, but I know Ek probably reached out to try to get him on there the way he got them on there, but I don't think Kwani went for it. Kwani probably was like, no, like. So, you know, X spicing it up crazy, spicing it up, saying Meek was talking to him like a demon. And I mean, like, he talking about pissing on the steps and pulling. I mean, so he's saying this to everybody to get them to go in on Meek and say he not like that pretty much. But, but Quilly Qu Qu was really trying to go viral in this joint. He was giving it up, like, trying to really, like, go in on whatever, whatever, um, X, X demon or all that. And, and, and you know they start getting into the this song. Yeah, so they pull up the this song, and they start breaking down the this song and all that. So they act was listening to it, going line by line, stopping him. I mean, when he heard something crazy, asking him is this true, asking him. I mean, questions like that. And Egg was trying to keep, I give Egg credit, he wasn't trying to get too messy with it. He wasn't trying to go too overboard with it because Quilly had made a line about Meek Baby Mom and all that, having six niggas' names tatted on some shit he said. I don't really remember off top what he said. He said something like that because I didn't really catch that when he said it in this song. That must have went, I mean, I must have looked past that line, but Egg was trying to go past it. He wasn't even trying to count. He's like, nah, I didn't mean he's trying to breeze past that and keep it going. But Quilly like, no, let's go. We gonna go viral. Like he really was trying to, not me address it. So he spoke on that and all that. So it was getting, I mean, a little goofy right there. Then they start getting into Meek status in the streets and all this again, like act spicing it up, trying to get Quilly to go in on Meek. As far as like saying. I thought Meek was the super gangster tough guy running around the city doing this, that, and the third of people and all that. Then he started, you know, going in about his status in the industry. And, uh, you know, it just got, you know, got a little goofy. But for overall, like, you know, I don't think Quill went too crazy, like, as he could probably could have. Some people might disagree. That, that would be, I'll let that, 
be for y'all to decide if y'all think he went super crazy on that draw. I don't think he did. He did give it up. Like I said, he, he made it entertaining. He, he said his little stuff. He had little funny jokes and stuff. He was being cool. He, I don't think he held back nothing. Like, I think he was being cool. But I don't think he went super over the top. Like, he seemed like me. He was in good. He was prepared. He seemed like he was sober. I me. Mean, like, he seemed like he was ready. I mean, he was waiting for this opportunity. And he carried it accordingly. Like, now, I guess similar to the danger, I think the interview could have been a lot better if Ick would have focused, I mean, at some point really got into Quill story and Quill history because Quill got an interesting story. If you run it from the beginning, how he grew up in this household and all that, if you know, and you dig into that, ask some questions, I mean, like, he could have got a lot better of a story and an interview out of Quilly. It go along with the funny little jokes and the bit and then the, the drama with me like you could have you know added some more to it but i ain't mad at him because i know act this is his whole goal and his whole angle is the he may attack me and all that so he pretty much just trying to focus on that but i'm just saying from my my perspective and my opinion i think the content and the interviews could be better if he give them more, you know, let them speak a little bit more of themselves in the story and not just focus the whole and the majority of the interview on me. I mean, like, but that's my, my take on it overall, you know. I mean, I, I'm I'm assu I'm assuming for the most part, Meek me ain't really, he don't really look at Quill like that far as like, on oh, no, I never really seen him threaten that Quill or responding to Quill or going that Quill, like, so I don't see this this interview like leading to nothing i mean like i don't think he look at quill far as like i think he more so look at him like i mean like quill bit and they ain't nothing serious and they be going at it forever so i don't think this particular situation gonna lead to anything outside that and hopefully not like i said i mean rp the fed g's we don't need no more goofy stuff hopefully this the last john and he do targeting me who knows i mean i can't foresee or anticipate who else he can have up there i mean to, that's really trying to go at me right now so this might i mean this might be the last job or who knows he might pull somebody out the woodworks that we're not even thinking about and bring them on the platform i mean like but hopefully not man hopefully this will be the end of it i mean somehow some way I know he's still gonna talk about Meek on his platform here and there, following Meek and comment on the stuff he's doing. Cause like I said, it's content for him, and he make money doing this. So hopefully Meek can learn from the situation and start ignoring him and get back to just making music and making moves. And I mean, hopefully this might motivate him to put some light on some other people in the city. I know he got core and he got other people he show love to, but maybe this might push him to start doing other shit in the city just to combat what they saying. Like so. Who knows? We'll, we'll see how this all play out. But y'all give me your thoughts and your opinions in the comments. Let me know how y'all feel about the interview. What's your thoughts and opinions on it? I uh, mean, that's going to conclude this, you know, this recap and this reaction video to the Quilly and DJ Academics interview. If, if you ain't watch it yet, go check it out. I mean, then come back and, and you know, comment on this video. Um, in the meantime, we signing out. Till next time, Philly Fame TV, we out of here.